Welcome back to the bench. As you can see today, we have a old brick bin style Commodore 64. Um, this is an eBay purchase. It was sold as uh, faulty um, having a RAM problem. Um, and also, unfortunately, the CIAs and the SID chip have been removed, presumably because they sold them as spare parts uh, to make a profit because, yep, that seems to what happens these days. So um, we'll take a look at this machine and um, you know, if you like this video, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit the uh, subscribe button, which you can find down in the corner of the screen here. And uh, you know, support me by subscribing and uh, you know, hopefully hit that like button. Um, so without further ado, let's have a look at this machine. So as you can see, it's a little bit yellowed. Um, there's a few uneven patches of yellowing. So I don't think a lot of that is from um, yellowing of the plastic, all of it. I think probably some of that is also due to maybe nicotine because yeah, it does smell like it belonged to a smoker. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, looks like maybe there were some stickers on the back here. So you can pretty much see what may looks like the original color of the machine. Um, yeah. So there you can see the original color and for those of you who would like to know the serial number and the where it's made it was made in uh, west germany this is a double g a model so yeah from what i understand those for some reason those serial numbers seem to be sort of don't know why uh, i've already popped the cover off this um just have a quick look obviously there's no cias in it so the keyboard definitely not going to work uh, the keyboard itself is in pretty good condition uh, just one of the clips are, are broken off here but the other two are uh, well and truly still on there and yeah these uh, seem to be in good condition so yeah it's not a problem there hopefully the keyboard works if not I do have a spare okay this is an old crappy cardboard that can go I'm not going to be putting that back in. Yep, and as you see, our SID and our two CIAs are missing here. Somebody has put a socket in, and it looks like one of the pins for the socket's lifted. Let's see if we can push that back into place. Yeah, that's gone down. And yeah, it looks like they didn't do a terribly good job of installing the socket because this one is lopsided. So I don't know whether I'm going to take that out and replace that or at least re-socket the socket. I don't know if it's worth it if it's actually making good contact. Um, so let's just uh, plug this thing in and uh, power it up and see what the problem is. Uh, power cord. Video cable. Power on. No, it's just out of memory. Okay. So we have our out of memory error. So let's see if we can find out which chip is faulty. We have a dead cast cartridge. This actually came with this computer in part of the eBay auction. So obviously somebody had done some testing and then decided to sell the lot. Okay, so zero page color RAM. Okay, RAM bad, and it says that U10 is bad. Obviously, it says the timers are bad because yeah, and keyboard interrupts. There's no test harness on here. And bizarrely enough, it says the SID chip, SID chip is okay, which as you can see, can't bother be true because it's missing. Okay. So let's get this machine taken apart and see if we can um, get that RAM chip out and yeah, get this thing back to life. Okay, 
So yeah, the underside of the machine, you can see there's some yellowing at the back. So obviously the sun was coming in from this way. A bit of yellowing inside the case. But our actual case, the bottom, looks pretty good. No kind of damage on there. is actually metal. I thought that was plastic. This piece. Okay. So the capacitors probably could do with being replaced, but I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, I still need to order the capacitors for it. Uh, yeah, you can definitely see that the uh, Those sockets were definitely put in later, and obviously they didn't do a terribly good job of it. This one is obviously this chip here, this 7406N. Obviously they thought maybe that was the, the, the cause of the RAM problem. And obviously it wasn't. Okay, it looks like there's been a bit of, well that's a bit of Loctite. But, you know, for some reason, you know, that's probably factory there. It looks like here and here with the RF modulator, it looks like that may have been replaced at some point. Possibly. And also these, the, the actual sockets for the uh, floppy drive and the video. And that's a horrendous solder job. I don't know if you can see that on there. Whoever did that, you know, really, really butchered those solder joints. So, I need to get these iron warmed up. I think the first thing I'm going to do is going to fix that problem because, yeah, they're horrendous. I mean, the dry pot's not as bad, but that video port. Wow, maybe the sockets were worn out and somebody replaced them. Obviously somebody didn't know how to use a soldering iron. And also, we'll be needing this fella to do the uh, desoldering of our ICs. for doing the, uh, so just doing this, I'll just use my standard soldering iron and the solder socket I just want to win that uh, crappy solder job. I think you really butchered that. As you can see that on camera with the uh, socket, but this side here is obviously they didn't put it down before they soldered it, so yeah, it's kind of leaning at an angle. Leaning Tower of CIA. <laughs> okay, our iron should hopefully be hot enough now. See it better. More position.
So yeah, still a bit of flux on there to clean off. Come on, focus. But as you can see now, that looks a lot better than it did a minute ago. So the dry ones aren't so bad. Um, so yeah, I'll leave those for now. I might fix them at a later date when I do a recap on the board. But for now, I just want to get that new tin off there. So time to warm up the uh, soldering station. And out she comes. And this quick inspection of the board. And it doesn't look like we've damaged any traces. And you can see that. Focus. Yep. So, what I'll do is I'll uh, pop in there a IC socket. That way, if it ever needs replacing again, we can just pop in a new chip. There she goes. And obviously we're going to do a lot better job than what this idiot did here. That's all in our IC socket because we're going to just hold that. The yeah, socket is nicely flat and it's been held in there. So now we can spool the rest of the pins. Okay. So here's our new chip. It'll focus. It's an NEC D4164C. And yeah. I'll pop her in there. So often with the case with newer chips, they need to have their legs bent in. The best way to do that is just to put it on a flat surface and just give it a little roll. That way you bend everything at the same time and yeah, you don't risk knackering your legs. Okay, time to plug the power of the video cable in and see if we have any more faulty memory chips. Video capture device doesn't seem to want to play ball, but definitely we've got 30667, which is definitely not correct. It should be higher. So let's plug our desk test card in. Ram it is not correct, so let's just switch off for a second. We'll plug in our dead test card again and see if it gives an indication of any other RAM that's faulty. 
Okay, so now it's saying U11 is bad. So we need to replace U11. Um, I will do that uh, off camera. Okay, as you can see from our uh, dead test card, that our RAM is now good. It says our basic ROM is bad, but um, I think that's probably, I'm not sure what's causing that because um, I know for a fact that the basic ROM is good. Sitting out there a bit. So yeah, all our tests show that uh, those are good. So the next thing to do is to replace these. Unfortunately, I don't have replacements for them. So I do have, after doing a bit of research online, is a couple of 8520s, which are the CIAs from the Amiga, which from the research, suggests that these should work. The only difference is uh, some of the timer functions. So let's pop these in. That's it. Okay. And to test, see if we have sound. I have a Swinsid. So let's pop that in there. Okay, that goes in there quite firmly. And let's see what the dead test says now. Still says our RAM is okay, kernel, okay. It's still saying that the interrupts are bad. But it's saying the SID chip's okay. But yeah, we're definitely getting audio. So I think the thing to do is to just quickly plug in the keyboard, take out the dead test and see if we can type. Connector needs to be repaired on this because you yeah, know it just fell off, so the wires are just hanging out. But I can just quickly slide them in, that's not a problem. The center is always negative, pin either side is positive. So I'll we'll just rest that down and we'll switch on. Boom, oh, and there we have it. And yeah, so some keys are working. So the keys are kind of working, but you're going to have to press them really hard. So I would suspect that, yeah, it needs a bit cleaning. But other than that, it seems to work. If lock. Yeah, that does work. Okay, so yeah. The keyboard's probably an issue. It will need to be resolved, but at least we know that that works. Or at least, let's try a different keyboard, one, an angled one, because it could be that those chips the CIA chips are not quite as good as the originals. So this is the 
keyboard from the C64 that I got from the uh, flea market, which I've yet to do a, a restore and a video on. So obviously the problem was yeah, that keyboard is probably dirty, I need a good clean. Other than that, it seems to be great. So I was doing some testing to see if I could get the uh, to load something from the floppy drive. And this happened. The screen went completely garbled, which is not good. And um, so, not sure what that problem is. Uh, it was reporting that the RAM was all fine. I can see the computer is working. Um, so, I don't know, maybe this is a video RAM problem or a problem with one of the other chips. Um, if you know what's causing this, then um, do me a favor, leave it in the comments below because I'm gonna leave the video here for now and do a, uh, a part two. So hopefully I can f uh, diagnose and fix that problem. And then um, also, yeah, I'm probably gonna do a recap on this board. I took out the uh, CIA chips and the Swinted just in case one of those was causing the problem. Um, but no, it seems to be that uh, something else has failed on the board shortly after I replaced those RAMs. Uh, CPU is a little bit warm, but it should be. PLA is fine. Hopefully, it's not the um, the VIC chip. Although, uh, I could probably test that if it's socketed. Yeah, that could, looks like it could do with a little bit of uh, TLC. Um, so yeah, I can test that offline and. Uh, We'll see if that was the problem. Hopefully it isn't. It seems to me that it's probably going to be a problem with the video RAM. So if you like this video, don't forget to, um, you know, hit the like button and there should be a in the corner here, a subscribe button, and yeah, ring that uh, bell icon if you want to uh, get notified of when I make future videos. Um, so, uh, you know, thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you'll come and watch some more of my videos. Bye for now.